everybody, it's Mr. Matt, and today we are going to learn about one of my favorite orchestra music composers. We're going to play a listening game, and I'm going to introduce you to a book that I found all about this person. So, hello, special care. Hello, Mr. Matt. How are you today? We're just fine. Hello everybody, how are you? It's nice to see you here today. Hello at home, how are you? It's nice to see you here today. Hello at school, how are you? It's nice to see you here today. Hello everybody everywhere, it's nice to see you here today. Okay. The first thing that we're going to do today is we are going to play a little listening game as I want you to review the instruments of the orchestra with me. We know that there are four instrument families. The strings, woodwinds, the brass, and the percussion. And all four of these instrument families, they work together to make lots and lots of different sounds, just like the sounds that you might hear in the neighborhood or in the city. And sometimes you can hear individual instruments. Sometimes you can hear the trumpets. And sometimes you can hear the cellos or the flutes or a triangle or something. And sometimes you hear all of those things mixed together. And most of the time, people enjoy what they hear very, very much. But sometimes people have different opinions, which is kind of what happened to my friend, Charles Ives. This is one of my favorite orchestra music composers. So this is the man Charles Ives. We'll come back to him in just a second, but for now I want you to play the listening game with me. Are you ready? Use your listening ears to tell me what do you hear? It's the woodwind! You heard the woodwinds. Let's do another one. What do you hear? The string family. That's it. Let's do another one. Listen to that. It's the percussion family. You heard the percussion family. Now listen. Can you hear it? It's the brass family. That's it. Let's do four more. What do you hear? The strings. I hear the strings. And now, what do you hear? That, the percussion. You can hear the percussion. And this. What instrument family is that? It's the woodwinds. Yeah. You can hear the woodwinds. All right. And that's it. You used your listening ears and we heard all the different families from the orchestra. Did you do it? Were you able to identify the four different families? 
And then tell me, what is it called when we see all of these families together? It is called the orchestra. Yeah, it's called the orchestra. When you see all four instrument families together, just like that, that is called the orchestra. And then there's this guy again. Can you say Charles? Ives. Charles Ives. Charles Ives lived a long, long time ago. He was born in the 1870s. That's older than anybody that we know. That's so long ago, like 150 years ago. And when he was a little boy, Charles Ives enjoyed listening to his dad because his dad was a music teacher. His dad was also a band leader and a church music instructor. And he would listen to his dad and his dad loved to combine different sounds. He liked to experiment. And he would take the instruments and do weird things to them to make their sounds unique. So when Charles was a little boy, he grew up knowing that music was not always the first thing you heard an instrument do. He knew that sometimes music was not always just the most expected thing you might hear. You could hear an orchestra instrument play and you know exactly what it is supposed to sound like and what it sounds good doing with all of the other instruments combined. But Charles Ives and his dad, they like to mix it up and they like to ask the orchestra instruments and band instruments to do different kinds of things. So listen to this. Here is one of Charles Ives' orchestra songs. Kind of normal. Not bad at all. Now listen to another one where he asks the orchestra this time to do lots of interesting things. That's very different. That's very different. So let's learn about it. We're going to read our book, or start to read this book today, The Extraordinary Music of Mr. Ives, the true story of a famous American composer, written and illustrated by Joanne Stanbridge. Joanne wrote all of these words, and she made all the pictures. So let's start this together and we will finish it on another day. One spring morning in New York City, a ship's whistle splits the air. The ocean liner Lusitania is sailing from Pier 54. The whistle is so loud, it shakes the ground. A few people cover their ears, but not Mr. Ives. He grabs that big sound with both of his hands and he shapes it into a song. He loves noises. Charles loves to hear lots of different noises. Even the most ordinary sounds are like songs to Mr. Ives. He writes music that is as busy as a city street. There are train whistles in it, football games, and rowdy picnics and cars rushing past. He hurries to his office and even that ordinary place sounds like music to him. The click, click, click of adding machines and the murmur of good morning are so beautiful that he forgets to say good morning back. Look at him working at his desk. All week long, Mr. Ive sits at his desk adding and subtracting numbers. Writing music for orchestras is not his job. His job is to sell insurance. Now, now and then he has to stop working and then he has to let his music come out. He lets it fly around the room and when it lands, he writes it down. People don't listen to his music. They don't like it. They don't understand it. They want familiar tunes with beautiful harmonies. 
not songs that are as bold as a city or noisy like a traffic jam. Mr. Ives writes his music down anyway. It lives inside him like a friend and he carries it with him wherever he goes. The year is 1915 and the nations of the world are at war. Everyone talks about guns and submarines and everyone tries not to worry, but one day terrible news comes. The Lusitania is down. An empty torpedo has struck that ocean liner. In just 18 minutes, the great ship went down, down under the waves. In the street, newsboys shout the headlines. The news spreads from office to office like fire and it hangs over the city like smoke. It tastes of war. When it reaches Mr. Ives, his music goes away. An awful loneliness seizes him and his heart stretches out across the ocean into the dreadful silence. Look at him. He heard some bad news and now he's really, really worried. He heard the news that a big boat sank in the water. And now he feels really, really worried and he feels really, really sad. And I wonder what's he gonna do about it? You know, sometimes recently I have felt very worried too. I've been worried that I might get sick. I've been worried about the people that I love who did get sick and I've wished them well and I've missed all of you very much and that's made me kind of sad sometimes. But I get to make videos for you and then I feel a lot better. You know what Mr. Ives does? When he's worrying, he's gonna write some music and that will make him feel a lot better. And you know what? People have been doing that. Lots of people have been doing lots of really cool things. People have been making pictures and art, drawing rainbows and sharing them. People have been singing songs for each other playing free concerts. People have been doing lots of things when they feel sad to help them connect with everybody that they love so much. And we've seen lots of cool pieces of art. Music art, visual art. And we're going to see from Mr. Ives how feeling sad about this boat is going to inspire him to also write a very interesting piece of music that helps him feel better. So we're gonna see what that music sounds like when we finish the book. Bye bye special care, bye bye Mr. Matt. Have a good day today, we sure will. Bye, I love you.